That's it, you're ready to start freelancing. Whether you want to become a full-time freelancer or just earn some money on the side, in this video, you will learn the best way to start. Also, I'll share my personal insights to help you succeed even further. I've been a freelancer for two years and overall, I have more than five years of experience in the area of programming, so be sure to subscribe to the channel. And first of all, you will need to pick a platform where you will start your freelancing journey. There are many options available, but personally, I would advise you to go with the most popular ones such as Upwork, Fiverr or Freelancer. Also, I would say that Fiverr is the less formal option out of the three of them and therefore it might give you some additional flexibility that you want. All of these platforms are different from one another in the way that you present your services, communicate with clients, handle your orders, get paid and so on. And you will definitely not be able to grasp all of it in the very beginning but this will come over time. Right away, my first advice would be for you to register on all three platforms. And I suggest you do this for two reasons. First of all, the more options you have, the better it is for you. At first, it will be very hard for you to get any orders because nobody knows you or the level of quality work that you provide. Therefore, this will increase the chances of you getting hired. The second reason is because of the nature of the work that you provide, you might discover that one platform works better than the other. Not only will this make your experience more pleasant, but it will bring in more orders and therefore money. And now once you've registered, this is the time to show your potential clients what you're worth and what kind of services you can provide for them. Each platform will have slightly different things that you will have to fill out, but overall and generally there are three points that you need to cover. Description of your services, past experiences, and your pay. So let's go through each of them one by one. The description of your services needs to be very specific and concrete. Describe exactly what you will be able to provide for the client, including the technological stack and the timeframes. For example, do not write, I will create backend for your app. This is very vague and unspecific. Instead, write the following, I will create a backend service for your app on the .NET platform with the connection to a database of your choice. Additionally, I provide services for creating a CI CD infrastructure and deployment to Azure or AWS cloud platforms. Here you can clearly see how the author is confident in what he or she is able to implement. And there is also a mention of additional services that the client is probably interested in. Be very very specific and separate your services into logical groups. This will make you appear more professional in the eyes of the potential client. Now let's talk about the past experiences and here really the same thing applies. You need to be very specific and concrete. Talk about the products that you were developing on your main job or perhaps any of the personal projects that you've been working on. A good idea is to use past tense when describing your past experiences or the product that you were developing. Do not just say I was responsible for creating a website for a car company. Instead say I've developed a website with the use of Flutter and Firebase, implemented user interfaces, client logic, and connection to backend services, optimized performance and deployed solution to the hosting service. Being this specific really shows your expertise and therefore increases your chances of getting hired. It is very crucial to put at least something in the section, otherwise the chances that you are gonna get hired by the client are close to zero. Therefore, if you have nothing to show, well, you can either get a job or start working on your personal projects before starting to freelance. And now we're moving to the third point, which is the pay rate that you will receive as a freelancer. Freelancer. This is a thing that a lot of newcomers to freelance struggle with because they think that they do not deserve a high pay. This surprisingly backfires because most of the clients actually tend to lean towards freelancers that do not have the lowest rate on the market. This is because pay is proportionate to quality, meaning that if you want higher quality, well, you better put more money out of your pocket. Therefore, when you will be calculating your hourly fee, which will definitely depend on things like your seniority level, your area, country, and many other things, don't be afraid to double that number at the end. Remember that either way, you would also have to pay commissions to the freelancing platform. And if the client really wants you, you could always renegotiate the hourly rate afterwards. All right, and now we're getting to the most exciting part, and that is you finding your first clients. If you're enjoying this video so far, give it a like because it really does help me to grow this channel, especially at these early stages. Landing your first client is the most difficult part of becoming a freelancer. Therefore, you will need to do everything in your power to overcome this step as quickly as possible. First of all, do not hesitate to propose your services to every order that matches your profile. Consider even those orders 
supporters that only have a partial match. The reality is, is that out of those 30 requests that you've sent, maybe only 10 clients will come back to you with an answer. And after further discussion, you will be lucky to have three offers left on the table. Therefore, message everyone and take on as many orders as you can. Don't worry that you might have a very high workload. You can always manage it once you will get that workload in the first place. After you finish the order, it is a common practice to stick farther with the same client as it is very hard to find a new one. That's why if you enjoyed the working process and you received a good pay, it's a good idea to message back a client and ask if there are any other projects or work that you can do for him. Always keep connections with the good clients because you can always message them in the future or they might even come back to you themselves. And that is it. Now you know the exact steps that you need to take in order to become a freelancer as fast as possible. Give it a try and thank me later. Remember that the more effort that you put in, the more possibilities you create for yourself to get discovered and the higher are the chances of you gaining that perfect client. However, if you think that being a freelancer is easy and amazing, well, it's definitely not. And in fact, it could be dangerous for your career. Check out this video on my channel where I explain how being a freelancer could have a bad effect on your career as a programmer. Have a good day and see ya.